Can you use parks on the air to learn CW? How does geography affect propagation? And what would be a good all-around handy capable antenna? This time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, guys? Thanks for tuning in to K8MRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Just put in the subject, Mailbag Monday, and you might have your question featured on Mailbag Monday. we got three great questions this week, so let's dive right in, guys. The first question is asking, can we use POTA? Can we use hunting POTA to get into CW? It seems that the amount of CW skills for a POTA hunter are not very demanding. They're not. Uh, you would need to be able to send your call sign a RST report and your state two letter abbreviation. You would not need, uh, you would need to copy your own call sign. That's about it. Potosite has all other info if you would need help with the rest of the exchange. I'm thinking that it would not take too much practice to master. So technically there, there really is no official exchange in parks on the air. So basically you could just give your call sign the signal report that's it. You're done. Uh, I, I have done this. I'm not a CW operator, but I, I do have a few CW uh, uh, contacts, parks to parks under my belt, uh, like with Mike and 8YO. Uh, if I see him spotted, I can throw out my call sign and like I, I know enough to know his call sign. Um, the problem is when they start like talking to you, <laughs> then it's like, well, all bets are off and I'm just like <laughs> 73 a and MRD and and on uh, on it goes. But yeah, you absolutely can. Um, I think it's a great way to get started. So uh, knock yourself out if, if that's if that's what is going to help get you into learning CW. Knock yourself out. You get you get to practice listening for their call signs. You get to hear how other people are operating. You can copy other people's call signs and and what they're saying. So I can't see why you would not want to do that so yeah fantastic absolutely absolutely knock yourself out do it and you know who cares if you screw up it's it's just a contact so don't worry about it don't worry about it absolutely this next question is a great question involving propagation this viewer is asking i have a question that was inspired by a, a live stream i did in florida you mentioned how in texas you hear jas and work them easily where in michigan you couldn't I want to have a better understanding of what factors are at play regarding geographical locations around the U.S. and how operating from there makes it harder or easier to work some other part of the world. I've heard this before, and I just don't understand the why of this. And then he goes on to say that he's probably going to be moving up to northern Michigan, etc. So there, there's a few factors in here. One is simply the skip zone that you're in. Is, is your geographical location and the takeoff angle of your antenna, are you in the right area to 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 refract your signal back down into another part of the world. Now, where I was in Michigan, just outside of Detroit, it was very, very rare for me to hear Japan. Where you're going, if we go over to Google Maps here, you are going, uh, where's Alpina? Somewhere up here. Uh, you're going way the heck up here into the, into the northern part of the state. I lived outside of Detroit. So I could never really hear Japan, but I could very easily get all the way into Europe. I've worked uh, almost every country here in Europe uh, at some point or another. Uh, I don't think I've worked Romania yet, but other than that, uh, the vast majority of these countries I have worked, and I could, I could get a lot of them quite easily uh, from my humble uh, off-center fed dipole that was probably 30 feet off the ground in Michigan. Down here in Texas, uh, I do not hear those European stations. I'm north of I'm north of Houston, right here in Huntsville. I don't hear those DX stations uh, much at all, but I do hear all the way down in Alaska, or excuse me, Australia and New Zealand. I've I've made a few phone call uh, phone conversations in Australia and New Zealand, where I've only had one FT8 contact in Australia. So it's, you know, when my signal comes out of here from Houston, it goes up and then it bounces back down. It can also be affected by, uh, like I said, the takeoff angle of your antenna. If you've got a vertical, you know, if you watch DX Commander, he's always talking about this, this five degree angle. Well, that is from him into the US, but where you are geographically located can be a completely different thing. So you've got, uh, you've also got propagation. When I lived in Michigan, the solar cycle was still kind of at the minimum. Now, two years after living in Texas, we're, we're, we're getting closer to the top of the solar cycle. So 
there's also that. Really, I'm going to say it's more your skip zone and, and what countries you can regularly hear in wherever you are geographically located. Now, Alpena is, as the crow flies, about 170 miles north of Detroit. So you could very well have a completely different uh, propagation and, and takeoff angle and the conductivity of your soil could be different than the conductivity of my soil. And I mean, there's literal books written about this stuff, but basically it's propagation, takeoff angle and uh, antenna basically is, is all it is. So experiment, you know, that's why when you look at these huge monster stations that have stacked Yaggies, what, what that stacked Yaggie is doing when you switch from one antenna to the other, you're changing the takeoff angle. So maybe you need a high takeoff angle to get into some of the Western European states. Maybe you need a little bit lower takeoff angle to get over to some of the Eastern European states and, and into Russia and that kind of thing. So it's it's a very it's a very very deep rabbit hole to go down. But hopefully that kind of condensed few minute version here uh, sums it up for you. So, and any anyone else that has anything else to add to this, go ahead and drop a comment in. We'd love to hear it and, and uh, learn more about this. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's just crazy. You go to a different place and you hear different people and that's the way it is. So I uh, hope that answers your question. Thanks for writing in. Lastly, we have a rather unique question uh, regarding being handicapped and antennas. This viewer writes, I'm 38 and disabled from a stroke. I have no left side use. What's the best antenna I can set up for multi-band uh, for his 7300 as he received it for a gift? He doesn't have his call sign yet, so he's just listening, uh, but he's not able to raise antennas. So putting up a you know an NFED in a tree or a dipole or whatever, that's not an issue. So he's looking for something easy. He can set up in a wheelchair that you can get him out. Uh, and at least listen for good range, trying to learn Morris code uh, as well. So would love to listen. So that is a great question. And, and I put a, a, a good amount of thought into this. And I really have two answers. The first is going to be the humble hamstick, which is not a multiband, but you can buy multiple of them or the Wolf River coils antenna. Both are ground mounted verticals and both should be able to do what you want with I'll say this loosely, relative ease. So I'm gonna move this table aside. I'm gonna change some cameras and I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. Please don't take offense. <laughs> That's not my intention. If, if, I, if I say or do something wrong, uh, I, want, I just wanna put myself in your shoes and see, is this possible? So let's hop over on the floor and put some antennas together. So the two antennas that really come to mind are going to be either the Wolf River coils. This is the Silver Bullet Platinum. This is the higher power version. So if you're looking to do CW, especially like 100 watts CW, this would be a good option. Otherwise, the Humble Hamstick is going to be a great option. Now you'll need to buy multiples of these for, for the bands that you want to operate on. But this might be the easier one to set up uh, with, with only half of your... Uh, uh, your abilities. So either one of these are going to kind of be uh, a similar way to set up. So we're just going to use the Wolf of Recoils tripod. Now you are going to need radials for these, but I'm going to try and do this one handed. And uh, actually, before we go into this, I would kind of lean towards the hamstick simply because the Wolf River Coils is gonna need some kind of telescopic whip. Now it can be this shorter one, it could be this 17 foot one. The, the only catch there is trying to extend these with one arm. Uh, sometimes the uh, sections like to get locked up like, like they are right now. So especially with that longer one and, and only having the use of one arm could make it quite a challenge to extend this uh, this whip all the way. So that is something to keep in mind. But if you're uh, persistent enough, I'm sure you could make it happen. So that is one thing I want to keep in mind where it, with the uh, with the uh, hamstick, you just take an Allen key and there's a couple screws here. You can uh, try to do this one handed. <laughs> you can kind of loosen this Nope, we just cheated, we used our arm. Uh, you can loosen these screws and 
you can extend this whip out and just mark where it is resonant. And that's a whole heck of a lot easier than having to do the, uh, the telescopic whip. So as far as mounting these, they're both gonna be a ground mounted vertical. So using the Wolf River coils, we have to use the counterpoise, but if we take the counterpoise wires, put them on there and we can kind of screw them in. But if you can't get, an, if you can't get a wire in a tree, a ground mounted vertical is gonna be your next best bet. So there's one. Let's see if we can get this second one in here. So there's two. All right, there's three. Now, you are gonna need to spread these radials out, but we have at least proven that it's possible. From there, we can either screw on our ham stick, which is just gonna be a single band antenna. And when you wanna change bands, you would just swap out the ham stick and you can just leave this assembled, okay? So that's done. Or, and I, I like the Wolf River coils better just in general, I mean, they, they both uh, perform very similarly. The benefit to the Wolf River coils is you get to use a longer whip. More radiating element in the air is always gonna be a good thing. So we can screw this guy on. And then even using this whip, this is, this is the 100 and, it's like a 102 inch whip, something like that. You extend it all the way, screw it on here. Now the benefit of this is you don't need to swap anything out. If you wanna change bands, all you do is either raise or lower this collar. So if you wanna be on 80, you might need to put your foot on there to raise it up. But that's uh, the, other, the other way you could do it. So that would kind of be my two recommendations for your situation. So hopefully this helps. And uh, hopefully we can, we can help get you on the air. So thanks for writing in, great question. So there you go, a little bit of a struggle for me, but I feel uh, over time, as, you, as if you start doing this more, you'd, you'd probably get a little bit better at it. Uh, and, and again, same thing guys, if, if, if you are in a similar situation or, or if you have any other input to what you think might be a good idea, uh, do leave some uh, comments down below. And guys, if you have questions for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com and put in the subject Mailbag Monday and you might be featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Thank you everyone for writing in. Thank you all for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash k at mrd radio stuff. Also, you can hit the like, share and subscribe buttons. That helps out. And you can follow me on Twitter at k at mrd. In the meantime, we will see you again on another episode of k at mrd radio stuff. 73 guys.